Okay, and good morning, everyone. Monday morning. Oh my gosh, that's right. The weeks still keep going on. Um, and I want to just call out a few things right off the top here as we get started. Some things you might have noticed since the last time you've seen me producing videos um, like a month ago. First of all, that bright light to the left of me, correct, it's a window I've had to uncover because we're moving homes. And so this is the studio as it stands now. As I said last week, I'm changing this little studio over to our tasting room this week and next. Um, so I'll be broadcasting from here for the next two weeks, but slowly but surely, it's going to be move, moving over to our Olympia tasting room. I'm excited about that. I uh, look forward to highlighting that space and um, getting to introduce folks out there. If you haven't been to our Olympia stores or the tasting room or the roastery, we'll get to do a little bit more by having the studio there for these broadcast days. But for right now, yes, I am whited out over here, ghosted out from that light. So, you know, it's going to look weird, but we'll just deal with it. I'll sit back here. Is that better? No, it's not good. No, it's not. It's not good at all. Also, yeah, I'm just going to call it out. My hair is a little bit crazy. I'm getting a haircut finally tomorrow. It's taken me a while. Forgive me. But I know that you are a forgiving group for sure. Um, so what are we doing today? Today, um, we are going to be highlighting again um, uh, the, these awesome tutorials that have been created out of um, uh, out of our Florida offices by Brendan Smith. So today we're going to be doing the French press, and so I have uh, set up a little French press area here um, with a, a French press that's warming right now. I have my coffee already pre-measured and ground, um, and then we're going to just go right ahead and do the brew along. It's basically we want to make sure that folks see these and they can actually make use of them. There's a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to slowly but surely be following all of them um, over the next couple weeks. Um, so the first thing I want to say, sound, says Brendan. Oh, really? I show sound here. Is that better? Is that better sound? <laughs> uh, I'll wait for Brendan to actually give me a thumbs up um, as far as sound coming through. Um, and so... But I'll keep talking, hoping you can hear me. <laughs> I show it as um, uh, live on the board here. So, um, so the first thing I want to mention is that we are going to be brewing our, as I, you might have seen here, um, our uh, Guatemala El Volcan. Um, and so, um, I do want to say we're not going to do a deeper dive like we have, like we have done before. Um, with that, uh, but I will direct you, I'm going to post right here, um, a link to um, a deeper dive into that actual coffee, so you can you can take a look at that if you'd like to, um, um, separately. And then I'm also going to, uh, one of the producers here will link directly to the um, video here. In fact, I think I can probably do it right now, just so you, if you want to make sure you have it. Um, I'll, I'll put it right here. Boom, there it is. Um, so both the, the Elvocon and now the tutorial that I'm going to be following are in the comments for this um, live show that will be forced to go to our archive and, and be hosted um, on our Facebook pages and on YouTube as well. So you can click those links to, to follow both of those. So French Press. I will say, and I've said this before, and you've probably heard other folks say it before, French press is probably the single most popular um, manual brewing technique for folks who are in specialty coffee, um, just because it's, it's a very, very um, kind of old technique, right, um, relatively. Um, it's very, very simple, relatively inexpensive as well. So those are great things, right? It's well known, it is easy, and it's relatively inexpensive to get into. So that's why we talk about it a lot, because a lot of our customers love French press. And so um, I'm going to follow along with the new tutorial that we have produced here, so we can all um, watch that together. So let's go ahead and pop over there. So, okay, are we ready to go here? Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit 
play on this. So I'll be pausing it um, occasionally. You'll see me pause it occasionally, um, just because there's some time lapse issues. Um, but I'll, you'll also see me making some silly mistakes. So bear with me here. I'm going to follow along to the best of my ability, though. Uh, okay, so here we are. Okay, so French press. I have my water all heated up. Do, do, do. Dance along to the music. Okay, so my water is heated. All right, I have my coffee as well. It's already been measured out. Um, it says 56 grams of coffee for a coarse grind. I've changed it a little bit, but I've stuck with the ratio, which is a one to 14 ratio for this. Um, I have my water preheated here, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually dump it out. Or my, my... Okay, there I've dumped it, and now it's gonna tell me to turn on my scale. Here's my coffee, coarsely ground, in it goes. And now the water goes in. I'm gonna tear it. Let me move it. A little bit of agitation there. I'm going to pause this for a second because it's moving a little too quick. And I'm also going to start my timer here as well. Now, I again, I told you my ratio is a little bit different. I measured the water out here earlier when I was pre-warming it to see just how much water I have. And this, um, this French press is a little bit larger than the one Brendan uses in the video. Um, but I'm staying with the ratio. So I'm actually going up to 830, okay, uh, for my total volume. So I just had to change the, um, the amount of coffee that went into the French press. But um, it is still the same ratio of one gram of coffee for every 14 grams of water, right? So, um, or 14 grams of water for every one gram of coffee might be the other way to think of it. So here we are, my timer is started, and now, let's see what he tells me to do. Put on the plunger. Okay, so to stir and break up the crust. I can do that, I'm using a AeroPress. So now we're going to do the waiting game, right? Because I have two minutes and 38 seconds left on my, uh, on my timer. And I wonder if I can get the camera down here to take a look at, uh, or if I can move this up at all. Maybe I can get it right up here. No, can't really see through. Um, I know Ben did a really cool trick the other day. He put a light behind, um, uh, behind the coffee and um, and it is shown through the water I have at 203 degrees um, so that is uh, the question that was asked um, by Michelle so yeah I mean uh, just off the boil um, honestly for this coffee which is a you know a lighter roast on our profile we could probably even drop the temperature. We could um, we could keep the temperature here. It could be a little hotter maybe, but um, in general, our, we like to think that the the more of a dark roast component there is maybe in a blend or just even a single origin that's roasted a little bit darker, the lower the temperature we're gonna um, we're going to uh, set our water at. That's why it's great to have these um, variable temperature kettles, which can control the temperature and hold it. Um, because you can't, it is important, you can change your brew temperature based off of both your method or the roast profile of your coffee, which has to do with the porosity of the coffee. So, um, so just off the boil, um, stir after four minutes. Oh, I made a mistake there. Did I read that wrong? Let's, let's go back over here and check it out, see if I did not follow along correctly. We still have a little bit of time here. So let's go ahead and watch it here. That's why we have these. Over two 
two minutes to settle. I did not follow it. So now it's pretty much partially down pressing the button. See, that's why we're doing this, right? Start time for four minutes, and, and it started. And then it says, remove plunger and stir to break up the crust, which I did. Right? Got it, got it. That was done. Oh, I see. And now, So we're following along and this is why this is different and I, I made a mistake. So I've set it for four minutes and then at the end of four minutes, we stir, right? Which just pause there. Got it. All right, break up the crust, which I did. And now I am, please plunge on top of the center for two minutes. All right. So now it's, I'm waiting two additional minutes is guess what we're at there. Oh boy, well, I would say egg on my face, but it's coffee on my face. I see that I had made a mistake in um, when I pre-watched the video. You know why? It's because, and this is a good thing. This is good. Been coffee for a long time and we are continually adjusting the way that we do different, have different approaches for how we brew coffee, whether it's brewing in a, a a drip machine or out of an espresso um, machine or with something as simple as the French press, right? So um, what that video had me do, which is different than I've ever done before, and that's why I'm glad I'm doing this. So what uh, this tutorial has us do is we have it um, run for the traditional four minutes um, and then we, uh, we actually stir it which a lot, which breaks up the crust, and then much like when we're cupping, um, it allows the the coffee with that agitation after it's been steeping for four minutes to begin to settle to the bottom, just like when we're cupping, right? If you remember when we cup, we crack that crust. We don't ever actually strain out the the coffee grounds when we're cupping. We just crack the crust like we just did at the four minute mark, and then the grounds settle. And so that's what this technique is having us do. And rather than plunge right at four minutes, we're now waiting an additional two minutes, which is about to be up. And then um, I'll run it back a little bit here. So, so um, we'll go back over to uh, this shot. So we've placed the plunger in, uh, and set the time for two minutes for sediment to settle, which again, I wish I had a light behind so I could show you. Um, you can't really tell, uh, <laughs> but uh, the sediment, it looks like it's settling and here my timer is going to go off and then what does it tell me to do here and press plunger partially now so I'm only going about half lap or halfway down all right and I do have a mug. All right. Well, that was interesting. Thanks, Brenda, for piping in there. Um, I had mistaken, uh, mistakenly not seen that second time signature, right? And so, um, again, this is why we include the link. You can go watch it. Um, and unlike me with my preconceptions about how to, be, how to do things, um, hopefully you'll follow the directions uh, correctly, right? <laughs> um, but we got here at any rate. So now we have um, a French press methodology. Uses our French press, our freshly roasted and ground coffee. And it uses a relatively high coffee to water ratio, a 1 to 14 ratio. Um, why it's good to think about getting a scale. Um, and then um, at the four minute mark, we remove the plunger and crack the crust replace the plunger and then the ground settle for two minutes and then we push the plunger halfway down. So a little bit different um, and uh, that was good to catch that and see it 
and now it's, you know, it's still a little hot. Mm. Yes, yum. And, and thank you, um, Michelle, you're right. Bat dwarf is so good, you could just mess up everything and it'll t still taste great. Well, within reason. The ratios are actually really important, but thank you for that. Um, that was fun. Uh, I actually enjoyed that. Great example of, uh, of of learning on the fly, right? So thank you for that great video. Uh, and we will be moving through the rest of them um, over the next two weeks. So I'm going to do another one on Friday, um, but at the same time, it's the usual slot where where Ben sits in the production. He's on vacation right now. Um, and uh, what I will do before the next one is I will watch it thoroughly before I start it. <laughs> I was watching this one kind of on the fly. I'll actually watch it beforehand. Or maybe I'm not. Maybe that was fun. Maybe it was great to, uh, to, to catch me um, trying to follow it. Um, so I'll figure out a, a way that I can kind of replicate as though I'm brewing along um, without making too glaring of a mistake from the process. So uh, thanks everyone for tuning in today. I'll be back here again on Wednesday at noon uh, and then back again on Friday at the same time slot, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, noon Eastern Standard Time. I'm continuing to do the follow, follow along with these great new tutorials. Go to YouTube, check them out. Um, put them into your library so you can refer to them. We have quite a few methods that Brendan's done. They're fun. They're awesome. Um, and also, of course, remember, uh, if you need coffee, today is a great day to order. It's Monday, the beginning of the week. They're roasting tomorrow if you order today. And of course, you can use our amazing code here, right? There it is. Save 10% when you use uh, the code watch and learn 10 on our website for all of your online orders. And that includes everything. If you need to get a French press, you can get a French press. If you need to get a scale, you can get a scale. If you need to get a kettle, you can get a kettle. And you're getting coffee. And you can even get a mug, too. And that 10% will apply to everything that you get. And I want to echo something that, um, um, that has been said earlier uh, for by my friend Ren, my counterpart over on the East Coast. Ren um, said something really heartfelt on, the, on his personal page. Um, and I want to say it out here to the folks who watch and who will watch this. Thank you so much for continuing to enjoy coffee with us. Um, every single one of you who has ordered online um, has really helped this company and the people who work for this company move through with as much grace as possible through the last seven months. And I'm saying that just as a, just a really uh, heartfelt thank you for continuing to um, enjoy coffee with us and, and love what we love and frankly thank you for your purchasing it is uh, meant that we've been able to retain as much staff as possible even though there's been some pretty wild swings in business and um, even though some of our wholesale partners um, are um, have been really devastated by this um, it's allowing us to keep moving forward and that's been because of you because of your ordering um, and so I say the same thing. If you love our coffee and you come into our stores, thank you. If you love our coffee and you're ordering, thank you. If you have a, a wholesale account that carries our coffee and you continue to visit them, thank you as well. It really does mean the world to us. Um, I, I know that I'm very privileged to work for this company um, and with the people I work with, but I'm also really privileged to have you all as my customers. So thank you very much for um, sticking with us. And we're going to stick with we're going to stick with you, and we're going to keep going. Um, it's been seven months. Maybe it'll be seven more. We don't know. But um, as long as we uh, we hold tight to each other, uh, we'll move into uh, tomorrow together. All right. So good to see you all. Great to be back doing shows, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday and Friday this week. Take care.